Hey, welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's been a long time since I uploaded a recipe video. Today I'm gonna to be showing you how to make croissants. I think croissants are just like so hard to understand when you're reading a recipe. So I thought a video would make it easier for you guys. So I'm gonna walk you through the steps of how to do it and all the tips and tricks that I find to get the perfect croissant. So the first step is preparing the dough and I prepared that last night. Basically, you want to prepare the dough the night beforehand because it allows the dough to rest and the gluten strands to develop. It also allows um, more flavor to form and it just overall, it's better for the structure of the croissant. For this recipe, I've done it without a mixer so you can do it all by hand. The reason why you don't need a mixer is because you don't actually need the dough to be that smooth. It can kind of be a little bit rough and scraggly and it's fine um, because as you like roll out the dough to fold it, you're actually kind of kneading it as well. So you're further kneading the dough while you're folding it, which is why it doesn't need to be kneaded to perfection now. After the dough has rested in the fridge overnight or about six hours, then you are ready to start with your croissants. I typically make my butter block at the same time I'm making my dough and then I just let it rest in the fridge overnight. You wanna make sure that it's even throughout and it's at the right dimensions. The easiest way is to just wrap it in baking paper to form that rectangular shape and then just thinly slice your butter and place it throughout. Um, and then just whack it with a rolling pin until it's even. I like to wrap it in another layer of cling wrap because I find that sometimes the butter oozes out of the baking paper and the cling wrap just makes things easier. So you've got both of these ready and I've just taken them out of the fridge. You wanna let the butter come to a pliable consistency. If the butter is too cold, it'll shatter and that's basically like the butter breaking up into tiny pieces throughout your dough and it's, it's gonna be just difficult to deal with. So like at the moment, like I can't bend it without snapping. You want it to be like pliable. So I'm gonna let that sit over there and then I'm gonna roll out the dough to a rectangle that is big enough to wrap this up. One of the most important things is dusting your work surface so your dough doesn't stick to it. Before we add our butter into the dough, you want to make sure it's pliable. So I like to give it a few whacks. Rolling it out really helps it come to the right consistency. So you should be able to squish it between your fingers. It's kind of bendy. Trust me, you want to get the butter right. It's going to be such a hassle later if it isn't. Fold it over and close it. Now I am going to split the sides. This kind of just releases tension in the dough. There's the butter in between. And now we are going to roll this out. So I want to roll this out into a 20 by 60 rectangle. I'm going to flip this over so the seam side is down. And we're going to do our first fold. Everybody kind of has a different technique to folding their croissants. You feel like you need to get as many layers as you can. But like in reality, you don't even need to get that many and they'll probably be better. Like the more you roll them, the more flat and squished all the layers get. And you want them to kind of be flaky and separate. So, you know, less work, better result. So basically with this croissant, we're making three layers, then four layers, and then three layers. So the three layers is the dough, butter dough, which we just did and we're rolling out now. And now I'm gonna make four layers, which is basically a book fold, also known as double fold. I mean, it's so much easier to show you guys what I mean. Always make sure you flour your surface. It just makes the dough kind of glide across your bench and a lot easier to work with. I'm going to trim my edges because there's a lot of excess though there and I want to have even layers of butter in between. To do this fold, basically, you fold your dough in half. This is like your middle line. Then you want to fold one side up to that line and the other side to that line as well. And then fold it like a book, which is also why it's called a book fold. So you should have four layers. I like to cut the sides again to release the tension. And then it also just helps form better layers. Um, one side, there's only one fold, but then on the other side, there's two. So you gotta cut through both. Um, once you've reached this stage, I'm going to roll it out a little bit so it's flatter and it's easier to roll out once it comes out of the fridge. I like to roll it out, press the edges down first because otherwise the butter can ooze out. 
If you find your layers are kind of slipping, you can spread some water in between them and then that will help them stick together. It's because of the excess flour. So I'm rolling this to about a 20 by 40 rectangle. Once it's reached this size, let's wrap it up and put it in our fridge to chill. Uh, right now in Australia, it's pretty cold. So the dough isn't melting that quickly. Um, if you're somewhere warm though, you might have a lot of trouble with the dough kind of getting soft really quickly. Halfway through rolling, if you find your butter is just starting to ooze out, just put it in the fridge for a little bit and let it rest for 15 minutes. Otherwise, turn your aircon on and just like leave it at about like 20 degrees, just something cooler than room temperature. But that. So the dough has chilled for 45 minutes and now we're going to do a single fold, which is basically just making three layers. So to do this fold, we're going to roll this out into 60 centimeters again, like we did before. You can see the edge is starting to get a bit scraggly. That's because the butter on the edges of the dough are colder than the inside. No big problems. So basically this fold is just folding it into thirds. I'm going to trim the edges, dust off any excess flour so it sticks better. Now fold it into thirds. So bring the bottom third up, top third over. I'm going to do the same thing as before and slice this edge. You can see all the layers that we've made in there. Now we're going to cover this up and let it rest for another 45 minutes. Okay, so it's rested for 45 minutes and now we can roll it out and cut it into triangles. So I'm going to dust it with some more flour. I want to roll this into a 30 by 40 centimeter rectangle. So then we can cut out eight croissants. If your dough starts to resist you, you can just let it sit for a little bit and then continue rolling it out. It's a bit bigger than 30 by 40 because I want to trim the edges. And I also want to trim these edges too. So everything is just straight. Once it is in your rectangle, now we're going to mark 10 centimeter intervals on one edge and then five centimeter intervals on the other edge. Now what you want to do is match up the edge to your first five centimeter marking and cut this edge off. So this is kind of like a scrap. And then from that, slice your first triangle. And now we're going to put this on a baking tray because we've got to let these chill before we roll them up. You should have seven triangles and just cover this and let it chill for 30 minutes and then we can roll them up. And then with all your scraps that you've kind of accumulated, what I like to do is roll them up and make like a little croissant loaf. Or you can make like little cruffins. All I do is just roll them up. You can put them to the side to let them proof while you proof your other croissants. I've just taken the triangles out of the fridge and now we can roll them up. This is the fun part, I guess. So how I like to roll them up is first, dust them off. Then I like to brush it with a little bit of water. I find this just helps it stick together. A cut at the bottom. This kind of brings the ears of the croissant out a little bit more. So I'll fold it out like this and then just roll it up. Don't roll it too tight because then your croissants can tear at the top. Once it's rolled, it should look like this. Prepare a baking tray and then just place your little croissant on your tray. Make sure you leave the little seam at the bottom tucked in and that way it doesn't kind of fall apart as it bakes. Make sure you have enough space in between your croissants so they can expand and rise. I'm going to cover these with cling wrap. Now these have to proof. You want to make sure you they're in like a cool environment. So I'd say like 22, 23 degrees. So you can leave them out if it's like a cool day. Otherwise you can put them in a closed oven with like a little bit of water underneath to give it a bit of humidity. They should be ready in about two to two and a half hours. I'll see you then. It's been about three hours and the croissants are ready to be baked. They should have expanded in size and they should have a nice wobble to them. For the glaze, I don't like using egg. I think it makes it too shiny. So I like to do a mixture of heavy cream and honey. 
I like to use a small food safe paintbrush to do this. Just don't want to brush it on top of the croissant. You don't want to brush it onto the layers because it can prevent the layers from rising up as much. Um, you want them to be able to separate as they bake. And while I'm brushing these, I preheated the oven to 200 degrees. So we're going to bake them at a high temperature first and then lower the temperature as they bake. Um, the high temperature will kind of give them a boost and then give them some browning and then load the temperature so that they can cook evenly. We're going to bake these at 200 degrees for 2 minutes and then we're going to turn the temperature down and bake them for 20 minutes at 180 degrees. They are done! The little end pieces that I rolled up and put into the muffin tins turned out really cute as well. Here are the croissants. They're so flaky and buttery and my whole house smells so good right now. If you want to like get a cross section, I wouldn't cut into them for another 15 minutes or so. Um, it just lets the structure set. But if you want to eat them warm, feel free to eat them straight out of the oven. They're honestly the best. They're flaky and golden and so good. I'll eat this one that I just broke apart because I can't waste them. Can you hear how flaky the edges are? Mmm! They're so good. If you're looking to perfect your croissants, I hope this recipe was helpful. It's got all my tips and tricks and it's actually not as hard as you think it is. So treat it as like a weekend baking project and make some croissants. If you like this video, make sure you hit the like button so I know and tell me what you'd like me to make next time. I'll see you later.